it, but they try to see it. Make sure. <laughs> I'm quite excited to show you this. Cooperate with me, bold uncasing video. Declaring your love for them. Yeah. Then you need know, to step please. away from the fruit bowl. <laughs> get to the future. Woo! Let's get to the fun part of this video. Oh, I just went there. This has been a video we've been wanting to do for quite a while. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's been an interesting one. Just thoughts and... And I can pretty much guarantee now that we don't hold the same opinions as a lot of people uh, about this, this film. Uh, on both sides of the camps. We're talking about the film Me Before You, directed by a fair Sherlock, released June 3rd of 2016. I can't speak. Based on the book by, what was her name? Jojo Moyes. Moyes? Yeah. Yes. I... We're, we're, a bit, we're a bit late to this party. This, 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 the film has been out a while. And it's, perhaps for obvious reasons, we, we were... Avoiding it a little to some bit, A little bit reticent to watch it. Um, not that I'm in the business of being readily offended by anything. Really, but just, just kind of the subject matter. And I... Um, I'd, I'd heard a smorgasbord of opinions on both pros and cons, so I was kind of, you know, a bit wary about watching it. But we finally I'm still curious. Yeah, we finally did. When you watched that, I couldn't relate. You couldn't relate. No. And were you offended? I wasn't offended, but the only reason why I couldn't relate was because. Uh, the wealth and the opportunities that he actually had in place you know compared to someone like me I don't have the big house I don't have the castle home. Uh, although I'd like to every girl deserves uh, a castle <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd like to be a princess but I don't have the same opportunities as as the guy in in this film, nor do you. Mm. Really. And because of that, it was really difficult to relate. He had everyone around him, and I also noticed that when he's going to places, okay, there are elements that 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 are shown. Like when he enters a narrow house, or when he goes into his wheelchair accessible vehicle with the ramp down, and he goes up the ramp, and it all is fine and dandy, but it's not always like that, is it? Mm. And and again, in broad strokes, your your opinions on what he chose to do. I respect it, but I, I'm kind of uncomfortable with it. That film, for me, kind of gave me the impression that disabled people have no way out but to commit suicide, which is not true. I mean, okay, when you watch that film at first glance, that's what you would think. And if I gave it another watch, I'd probably, you know, understand a little bit where he's coming from. And okay, he's quadriplegic and, you know, he's got spinal injuries, but it's not the end of the world. Mm. You know, and there are, you know, options to have a better quality of life, especially if you're in a situation that he is and and he's got money and all that shit. You know, every, anything is possible. The other thing I wanted to ask you was, how does it stand up as a love story? It doesn't. It doesn't. Because? Because for 
Well, it wasn't about love. It was about him. And hmm. it was. It wasn't a love story. Because if it was, he would have said, all right, this girl really loves me. I have something to live for. It's not the end of the world. You know, she has made me happy and she can continue to make me happy. She, he didn't have the confidence in her to say, you know, I, I, I deserve to live, I need to live. It wasn't a love story. I don't see it as one. So what do you, what do you see it as? I see it as pity me because I'm in a fucking wheelchair with quadriplegic and spinal injuries. I don't care about anyone else. Fuck you. I'm gonna die. So what are your opinions on suicide, generally? Do you think it's selfish? Do you think what? It's a tough one. It depends. Because if you're just gonna fuck about with your life and, you know, do anything and everything because you have the luxury to do it and still want to die, because you feel that your life isn't good enough, then to me, that's that saying that person isn't putting enough of his energy, enough effort into bettering his life. Yeah, or they're, or they're just kind of quitting. You know, surrendering is, is, is the best word that I can... Because that, if that was me, I'm not being funny, but I wouldn't do that. No, but let's be honest, you're the person in the room that's closest to his situation, so... With the first generation book. With the first yeah. generation <laughs> <laughs> No class, you know. <laughs> no class, um. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. I, I don't... I don't think my life is worthless. I always, I'm not trying to do any pep talk here, but I always think there's a better, brighter option in life that you could go for, a better path that you could go for. And it's never the end of the world. And if shit gets difficult, that's just life, you know. You've got to learn to deal with it. You've got to learn to handle it. And I've been living with a disability all my life and every day is a new lesson for me. It is. I've only just recently unveiled my independence and become a better person because of it. But, and believe me, I'm not coming down on it particularly in favour. So I don't hate it as much as some people, but I don't, I'm not going to come down in favour of it. But you, you have to accept that you're not as disabled as this chat. But just because of that, does that still mean that there's no other option for this guy mm. besides euthanasia? Mm. Yeah. That's a coward's way out. I don't know, man. He uh, was better off. He was better off than any of us. Yeah. I, I think... Is it my turn yet? He <laughs> goes, no, no, I don't, like, I don't mean to no, no, no. take no, over it's good. I think, to a video. I think my, my opinions are a bit different. Uh, I know you don't agree with me. Not on a lot of it I do, on some of it I don't. What I don't have... The one thing that lots of people jumped up and down about was the, the very obvious thing at the end being the fact that he chose to take his own life. That is the one thing in this film that I don't have a problem with at all. I, I think... Anyone has. Would the, you do it? 
if it was my last option and I had no one to be around for and I just but this is the thing know. he had yeah well, I, I'm getting yeah. to that right, but it's all relative <laughs> yeah um, the one th- so the one thing I didn't have a problem with and then there are a few things I didn't have a problem with but the main thing I didn't have a problem with that a lot of people did was the fact that he chose to take his own life um, and even the fact that the whole the whole film was pinned on that you know um, was okay I, I couldn't help but feel that it was slightly superficial when it it had a, it smacked a little bit of oh I tell you what would be really interesting is if he decided to take to take his own life and yeah, no one would ever see that coming but as you said the fact is he may have decided to do that but his circumstances and the way the film was presented very very neatly ignored most of the issues that a disabled person didn't even touch on it didn't even touch on most of he was filthy rich so he had no problems with money and gaining help with looking after himself Um, he was filthy rich he had opportunities you know and connections and he, he was he was had ways and means basically um, he was articulate he could express himself um, he was good looking which goes a long way um, and that's just act, an actor thing but one of, one of the one of the interesting things because I, I saw a quick interview with her the, the writer and she said that she had a couple of relatives who were uh, had to have 24 hour care and they were kind of one to one or two to one with care and stuff and that's all fine and it, 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 it takes you know it takes some getting used to to be around someone that you care about and you, you see them struggling Seth. in that way but I I mean she didn't specify so I don't know I don't want to put words in her mouth but I don't think she gave the impression that those two people wanted to yeah. Mm-hmm. off themselves right and this is that's the overriding feeling I get with this whole film I, 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 even before we talk about the love story thing which is just nah right the problem I have with it is it feels like an, ac- an academic exercise in all oh I wonder what would happen if I think the only reason why they chose you for the year is because people outside the outside society oh, is comfortable in seeing a disabled person do that because it's what they're used to yeah and well I think it can be yeah uh, not not quite but yeah do you um, know what I mean yeah no, but I think that's the, that's the overriding thing I have with this whole film it feels like an academic Exploration. Or, oh, I wonder what happened. Or I wonder what it must be like to be disabled and have been made disabled, which we both said is worse. We are both born disabled, so we never actually had anything taken away from us. Mm-hmm. So it's we, we accept that it's a hundred times harder if you have the cake and then someone takes the cake away yes. for the rest of your life. Um, that that sucks. Yes. And. It, it, it's an interesting exploration, but it does feel like someone not really fully aware of how things could no. work if you're in that situation. No. And like I said, the money conveniently circumvents all the issues that a lot of disabled people have with finding care and stuff. So this guy had ways and means of making a pretty good life for himself and I know that me and Bush are professional with the people so we're going to we're going to have been around people like him I seriously who maybe not as rich but I know people who 
have been as disabled as him, literally, and have taken themselves off to university and done things and been in horrible accidents and then take, had things taken away from them and all this kind of thing. And I've made, I'm thinking of one woman in particular and she, fuck it, she did it anyway. She went to university and she, you know, did what she wanted to do. I can't remember what she studied. But, so that is someone in his very similar position who's actually gone the other way. Um, and I think what makes me uncomfortable with this film is that a lot of people, a lot of able-bodied people will watch this film and kind of like what you were saying, they'll maybe feel comfortable is not the right word, but they'll, they'll relate to the idea of someone being in that position of wanting to take their own life because they're disabled. They're, they're, they are disabled and because if they were in that position, i.e. the audience, they would probably feel that they would want to do that as well. Yeah. And that's what I think is the overriding mass appeal of this film is like, oh, well, if I was disabled, I would, I, or if I was made disabled, I would probably feel that way. See, here's the thing. Um, if this guy didn't have any money, then it would have been a, a better portrayal. Of yeah. And you, I, I mean, we're, we're, it's all yeah. sort of hyperbole and um, hypothetical, but you'd probably find that he was more determined to make a go of it. Because you no. Know, no, you probably would because you fuck it. I'm not gonna just because. Yeah. No, you probably would. Someone in that position, like my friend, she was in a horrible traffic accident and was made in that, you know, made paralysed, and she went <laughs> off to university. Yeah. You know, so people people do. You know. No, I'm talking specifically of this character because uh, if this character didn't have any money, do you reckon he would have still offed himself? No, that's what I'm saying. No, he probably wouldn't. Because I don't know. I, don't know. I mean, you've got, we're talking hypothetical because he's not real. Yeah. Um, and that's also I think a lot of people. I'm talking about disabled people who watch this film. So I'm joking about a bit, but I'm, I'm I really am sort of in the middle because you had you had the camps of disabled people who just jumped up and down and said it's offensive, it's this, it's that. It's fucking not. It's a story. It's it, controversial. It, it may be bollocks. It's well acted and it's funny in places, but it may not stand up realistically. But it is a story. Don't pin your, you know, don't try and identify with. Don't pin your experiences yeah. with this guy because it, it doesn't really it doesn't really relate. What what worries me is that some people watching the film who are able bodied will possibly relate to it because they would say, Oh, if I was in that position I'd probably do the same thing. Oh, how the fuck does he do it? Yeah, yeah, exactly, all that kind of thing. And I mean talking as a someone in a fairly unique position of being a musician and stuff and actually going out and playing and I know that I could be half as good as I am fuck it I could get up on stage and go bang 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 on the, on the drums and someone would clap because the bar is set so low for people for disabled people who want to achieve yeah um, and what this film kind of does maybe inadvertently is it kind of okay explores the story of this one guy who falls in love and wants wants to die in the end, but it inadvertently lowers the bar a little bit because and expectations. Yeah, it's kind of like oh well, you know, well you would, wouldn't you? You'd want to, you'd want to die. It doesn't really stand up as a love story, I don't it think, did. because it, it really did feel like it was a love 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 horror. <laughs> Love story shoehorned into this idea of disability. It was. It felt like it was forced. Yeah, because um, they were they were trying to explore it. Maybe they. In, I, I, and I hold my hands up. I haven't read the book, so the book might be different. Yeah. But I got if you were in that position as fuck it. I call her Khaleesi because I can't remember her name in the in the film. <coughs> Lulu. Lulu. Whatever. Um, I, I would think that it would take a little bit longer, not necessarily to fall for him, but you 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 go you go gently, you yeah. know, 
and it was like there was none of that it was kind of like go go you know it's just it, it, but I guess that was because she was in a rush to like try and change his mind about this euthanasia thing yeah, yeah, yeah. and because he had a specific set time to do it it's like six months or something yeah. she did everything in her power to try and sway him away from that. Yeah. But... Um, I, 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 no, I, I, th- I thought there was... I didn't think it was as puritanical as it going to be. I thought that, you know, it wasn't sort of, oh, we're dealing with a really sensitive subject, blah, blah, blah. I, there was some humour in there, especially when he... <laughs> She first walks in and he does the whole spaz attack thing, which I've also seen in, in uh, fundamental, Fundamentals of Caring, which is also very funny when he walks in. It's great. You know, there's some, there's some funny moments in there. So it's not this kind of precious kind of thing, but it, it, kind, it goes back to this idea that it feels like an exercise. It's a thought exercise. What would happen in this situation? You know, it's not actually real. And if you watch the trailer, um, and this is what kind of stuck in my craw a little bit, you know, as much as the author talks about, oh, it's just um, this one particular story and everyone disagrees with him and, you know, it's not supposed to condone him doing this, it's supposed to be objective or whatever it is, that she says if you actually watch the trailer that they put out the official one it gives the impression that it is the right thing to do you know the fact that he he chose to do that really? yeah if you watch the trailer you know you've got like in um, Tywin Lannister Charles Dance saying oh you know we should support him and hit, then you've got your man Mr. Bumper Car saying um <laughs> Oh, I, I can't give you what most mm. men can get. You know, it's, it's all the negative uh. things. There isn't actually anything positive. And you see the Lou and her sister sort of saying, oh, you know, you've got to give him a good time before he goes. Ah, uh, yeah, I see. Before he goes completely. So the, the, <laughs> the, 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 the underlying thing is that actually it makes a lot of sense for him to... That's why I'm saying yeah. the like, for society maybe comf- maybe comfortable in whatever. yeah I don't think comfortable um, as well, but it would make a lot of sense yeah because it, it's most people's natural oh, fuck it it might be mine if I suddenly woke up and I was paralysed properly I don't know but I would like to think not maybe because my opinions would be informed by what I've been through but I just think it, it's a very convenient. Package. I wanted to actually pick uh, a bone with the the author in, in in relation to what I was saying about the, the trailer and context and all the rest of it and how she wanted it to be perceived. She said quite clearly in, in an interview that the overriding consensus was not a negative one from people who had seen the film and she got a lot of um, positive reviews and stuff. But I would I would say that having heard some some um, interviews with disabled people on various radio stations, one in particular, uh, that that wasn't in fact true because they and they were wrong for saying this. I think they're they're stupid and if they if they think that a film has this and amount of influence than the idiots and deserve everything they get. But they, they were saying that they were worried that this film would um, condone assisted suicide and that their key workers and carers would think that it was okay to help them die because their life wasn't worth living. Now that's an entirely stupid premise and they need to get out more. Um, and I know they can't physically, but you can do a lot online nowadays. I mean, seriously, they need to wake up a bit. But it, just in, in, in response to what she was saying, in the fact that there was no negative, con, uh, negative feedback, there 
there was, and there was a lot of it. It was misconstrued and not particularly sensible, but it, it definitely existed. I think it's her opinion or her view on a story, and her view is slightly skewed. It's not very practical, so although she might say that she doesn't want to be contentious, the way that she's framed it is very contentious, because it, actually it's very simplistic. And it's very it's pretty. Plain. And it's very pretty and it's very lovely. But yeah, this is a little insert. Back to normal programming. Yeah. And it's like, oh yeah, well, it's, we're just exploring this, exploring this side. A bit like, okay, so we accept that it's a thought exercise, but a bit like, you remember when the Borat films came out? Yeah. Now, I've got no problem with Sasha and Barra Cohen at all. I think he's a very clever man. Yeah. I thought Allergy was very good. Um, and he really, you know, gave two fingers to lots of people in interviews. It's hilarious. But that stuff and Borat, when Borat came out, you know, a lot of people who went and saw that film went and saw it because of the funny brand man making funny, stupid things. Stereotypical. So, funny stupid thing saying so, um, but they didn't really take any notice of what was actually he was trying to do which was mm. to the American establishment and mm. all that stuff and it, it kind of smacks a little bit of that this film because most people are going to say oh it's a love story it's so beautiful and it's, it's sacrificial and blah 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 he's but, so brave to yeah yeah and it, it's not actually about that. The guy was actually, you know, he's a stubborn motherfucker. Who does that? Who strings a girl along? Yeah. And then decides to still, you know, off himself. Um, and I think there were, there were very thinly veiled attempts to deal with the other political arguments like Lou's mother. Um said very quickly oh well he's not in his right mind and then it was kind of conveniently brushed over and stuff and it's it's difficult because they are trying to appeal to again I haven't read the book so they are they are trying to appeal to a mass market and a mass opinion if you like so it's almost like they didn't want to get too political and too down and dirty but you can't but if you're going to make a film that is, you have to. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I think I think it was... I think it was a bit cheeky and a bit weak. Yeah. To th you to have to delve right in there to, like, get every nook and cranny of the situation. Yeah. You can't just touch the surface and be like, OK, I'm happy with that because that's not... That's not... Or at least the other way. You you can't watch this film and think, right, I understand what it is to be a sick no. person. Yeah. Call it call it a love story if you want. It's but that, then that close. raises the question, what was the point of the actual issue? Yeah. Because it could have been about anyone. It could have been about a fucking fireman and an ice queen. It doesn't it doesn't matter. Yeah. It could be about... Any, it, it, it just seemed a bit sort of thin. Anyway, I'm not going to go all out and say I hated it because I thought bits of it were funny uh, there are a couple of inconsistencies we should have been technical consultants right he's on the beach she's in tears because he she's realised that he wants to die whatever we've discussed that there are no tyre tracks where are the tyre tracks where are the tyre tracks how did he get there was he airlifted <laughs> Did he conveniently fly? <laughs> yeah, you know. What's going on, right? And the night. The narrow house. The narrow house. The narrow oh, doorway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the plane, that was another one. So we see him on the plane in the chair. But how did he get there? So how did he get there? I guess they might have had a, a seat or something. But the other thing, right? <coughs> his nurse, his his. Um, main care of box off. <coughs> Physical. <coughs> yeah, that's another thing. <coughs> he actually can afford a physiotherapist. 
So. Yeah, but what what you're saying is like they should represent all of these all of the time, and they're not going to because that's the nature of Hollywood. No, but if you're going to touch on a subject such as disability, you have to look at every element. Yeah, but they're not they're not trying to, that's the whole no, point. They're trying to make a romantic comedy. This is what I'm saying, it wasn't romantic, it wasn't a love story, it was about him yeah. wanting to do what he wanted to do. And regardless of how this girl felt, he still decided. But then again that that's his that's his choice. Yeah, and I respect that. I, I just but think, I just I, think I it don't wasn't think it was yeah. done properly. It wasn't dealt with particularly. But yeah, I mean, so the physiotherapist goes off because he's chasing some girl. And uh, Khaleesi and Bumper Car Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Khaleesi and Bumper Car Man get all cozy with the. Uh, Sitting on the lap thing. With, uh, in, in bed, right? How does he get from his chair to the bed without help? Still I mean, no tracks. Eve, and well, they're inside. So, yeah, well, but even if she is fiendishly strong, which she and the wheelchair is not anywhere to be seen. Yeah, well, that might have been moved. But even if she is fiendishly strong, which she might be, that's still a two-man job, and there needs to be a hoist. You know, <laughs> and I know, like we're being pedantic, but it's just like it's it's too clean it's too it's not real it's not actually about disability which which annoyed me because the disabled people who were jumping up and down had no reason to jump up and down because it wasn't real it wasn't real and uh, you know the other people who thought it was a love story I don't know have you read Macbeth you know it's uh, like um well Romeo and Juliet you know it's yeah, it was all right. I thought there were some funny moments. I liked the relationship between the two sisters. I can't remember where the other one is from. I've seen her before in other things. Uh, I can't remember where, though. I thought that was all right. I thought he actually did a good job acting. He had no reason to do anything about disability. All he had to do was sit, which is fine. But I just think... What about the whole thing about his uh, girlfriend leaving him for his best friend? Well, that was very convenient, wasn't it? Yes. I mean, I, I had to backtrack a bit because it happened so quickly. I was like, oh, okay, well, she's she's off, is she? Okay, fine. <laughs> um, no, but I mean, I think you're doing it a little bit. I think we both are. We're kind of taking it personally. I mean, it's a, it's a story. The point I want to make is that... It, it, it's not about disability. No. It can't be about disability. It doesn't even touch on the not surface really, not really. of disability. Not really. It's a bit kind of yeah. yeah, it's a it's an able bodied person's view of what it must be like to be disabled. That's exactly what it is. And she even says so in an interview. Not to take any credit away from her writing the book, because writing the book is hard and you know, it's well acted. If you guys want to see a true reenaction of what it's like to be a disabled person, drop a line in the comments. What are you going to do? I see what I can do. Stick the camera to your head. (laughs) Yeah, get one of your GoPros and mount it on my head and, and, you know, (laughs) do things. But it's not about disability. It's no, I think that's what irritates. It's the fact that it was it's portrayed as being about that and these extenuating <laughs> circumstances, and it ain't. It could be anything. Um, but yeah, I, I I don't hate it as much as I thought I would. I don't hate it. I I'm it just quite funny, irritated by it. No, I'm I'm irritated by it. And I'm irritated by people's opinions of it because they're they're investing too much in it I mean, maybe we are because we just made a fucking great big video of it but I thought it was worth saying I don't I have a problem with people wanting to die but I just think his circumstances are not the kind of circumstances that make you want to die he was he was a very stubborn 
The only reason why he wanted to die is because he refused to accept his new life. Yeah. And that, to me, although I respect his decision, that, to me, is still a cop-up. Yeah. Because you can learn to adjust. You can learn but to But then adjust. again, it comes down to it, and it's just a story. But I just... This. No, I mean, this is why I'm saying it's not an accurate portrayal of disability. Because if... If I was in that situation, if you were in that situation, if anyone else was in that situation, they'd still learn to adjust. I don't know. I don't know, maybe. Really? I don't know. I don't do you, know. Do you really not, think it, But that's that not what I have an issue with. It's how the actual film was set out and the subtext of the film. It's not if I was... No, but I'm saying it's because he chose... It's because he refused to adjust to his new life that he chose euthanasia. Yeah, but that that's his choice. But within that, and it, with, it's hypothetical because it didn't actually happen, so we can't say, you know, he shouldn't have done it or anything. But within that, it's just the subtext of the film and the way the trailer comes across... They, regardless of what they say, they definitely had a message, and the, the the subtext of it to me was that it may be for the best, and yeah. that that's what I disagree with. It's very much a disabled per, uh, uh, Freudian slip, very much an able-bodied person's uh, uh, idea of what it must be like to be disabled, you know. And uh, I personally know people who are in that position and they do all right for themselves. Thank you very much. So maybe I'm coming from a slightly different place in that my opinion is informed, but it worries me that that kind of film goes out and loads of people jump to conclusions. And because, I mean, there's all kinds of studies to say that most people, the majority of people, don't actually interact with disabled people. So the only disabled people they see are from the media. And I could go on for a whole other video about that, but I'm not going to. So it, it just, yeah, it just worries me that this sets out disability in a certain way. It's whether he chose to die, whether he fell in love isn't really the issue. It's actually the subtext of the whole film. Like I said, didn't hate it, I was just irritated by it. Yeah, no, I think that's true. There's just yeah. some things like, no, nah, not really. <laughs> yeah, and uh, this was intended to be a short review. Oh, man, sorry. Uh, but it was my fault because I went on a tangent. Um, no, me too. I had this kind of idea of translating in my head. But I f we felt that it was pretty important for us to touch on the subject and to talk about it yeah. um, because we both know what it's like. In reality, um, so yeah, we just wanted to share it with you. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Quick addendum, if you want to see a film about disability, check out Scaligrig. I can't spell it. We'll find we'll find links for it. We'll put it in the description. And of course, there's my left foot as well, which is pretty decent. Um, it just yeah, just go and see some other stuff. All right, guys. Have sorry fun. about that. I have many words to say about many things. I'm gonna go away now. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Until our next video. This is B and Tom signing off for Wavy really Good. <laughs> I'm special! <laughs> <laughs>